cleaning the valve lifters. So, you pick one valve lifter. Here I've got the first, um, the first valve lifter on the intake cam, cylinder one. So we take that, take it out of the little bottle, set it down. I'm gonna grab here one of these blue lint-free rags and give it a quick wipe so it doesn't slide out of my hand. Okay, awesome. So now what you need to do is you need to remove this part on the inside. And what I'm, the way I'm gonna do that is I've got here a board of wood on the floor and all right, put it here so you can see it. You're just gonna bang it until the piston body starts to come out from the lifter body. Okay. All right, so I'll give you a comparison shot between another lifter. So you see, once this is the one that I was banging, you see how the lifter body is is coming out. That's what, sorry, not the lifter body, the piston body. So once it's like that, you may proceed. I'll put this back where I found it. Now, you're just gonna take a rag and you're gonna pinch the piston with your fingers and you're just gonna wiggle it out. There you go, it's out. All right, so. The piston is out of the lifter. The lifter, you can just spin it around and put it down on a rag because it's got a lot of nasty oil. I mean, this oil is so black, BP's already at my door trying to buy it from me. All right, so now it's time to continue. Oh, I need to grab a magnet. The purpose of the magnets will be obvious very quickly basically just to keep all your parts organized. Good magnet. Okay. Now, you'll separate the inner part from the outer part. Again, you can just do that by hand. No need for any tools. These will come right apart. So there's a, little sp there's a spring in here. That's the large spring. It just came out. It's right there. So, I'll keep these organized in how they were removed. Next, you're gonna grab some tweezers and you're gonna remove the little cap that's on top here. And be careful because there's a tiny, tiny spring and a tiny ball check valve that you don't wanna lose. So be very careful when this comes out. Separated. I'll remove the ball. All right, the ball is out. Now, removing the spring because it's so tiny, I'm just gonna grab a magnetized precision screwdriver, and I'm just gonna just gonna grab it out. Okay, that's good. There you go. You have a tiny little spring right there in the middle. You've got the ball, you got the inner part. That's the cap that holds the spring and the ball. Here's a large spring, the, out, the outer part, and all that goes into the lifter as such. So now, I'm gonna take my magnet and stick everything to it so I don't lose anything. I like to start with a little spring because it's so small. So I just wanna make sure it goes on the magnet, big spring, this, that, okay, so everything's on the magnet, just gonna clean this out, lower the magnet in here, put the lifter upside down, well, whole side up, alright, that's more descriptive. 
so that I can, and I'm going to pour some degreaser in here, clean all the parts out. There you go. So now let that soak and move on to the next lifter. Okay, the second phase to cleaning the lifters is you take them out of the nasty degreaser, you wash them, I mean you rinse them in the water, and now uh, quickly I'm gonna dry, I'm gonna dry the lifter out. Use lint-free rags for this, uh, for this part, you don't want to leave any lint stuck anywhere. Alright, so. Alright, so that's dry. Good. So now you're going to take your little cup, you're going to put all the rest of your pieces into the little cup. And now what I have in here is not beer, but it's a 50-50 mix of xylene and acetone. I'm going to pour... Actually, this is my last one, so I can just pour it up. There you go. I'm going to let that clean in there. Now back to the lifter. What I'm going to do is I have over here some carb cleaner. I'm going to spray the inside. And now I'm going to give the outside a quick spray too. Then wipe it clean. And finally, while everything is soaking, I'm just going to take some WD-40 and just spray the outside just so it doesn't rust. I mean, this is steel after all and it's exposed to air and it's just been it's just been washed with water, so just a quick little spray in WD-40. And now I'm going to leave it and wait for the rest to clean. Okay, once again you rejoin me once I've mastered the task that I'm trying to teach you. So, reassembling the lifters. Very simple. Grab yourself a lifter. Make sure that all the parts are there and take the magnet off. Okay, I'm going to flip that upside down and just put it down. If you see any rust which you probably will because the time it takes you to assemble all of them, by the time you get to the last few ones, they will have rusted a little bit. I spray a little bit of WD-40 and then with a Q-tip, you, you can just scrub out the inside and get any rust that you find. There you go, that's nice and clean. This rust will come right off, it's not like super bad, just a quick swipe with a Q-tip and it'll be gone. All right, so we have the little spring, we have the cap, we have the little ball, we have the small part of the cylinder, the spring, and the big part. All right, so those are all our pieces. Put the magnet away. Now, like I said, these parts will likely, ha likely have small parts of rust here and there, just from sitting a couple of hours. So again, a little bit of WD-40 and give give any little rust spot a wipe, if there is any. Here we're good. That doesn't look too bad. Also take the time, even if there's no rust or anything on it, take the time to wipe uh, to wipe the seat that where the ball sits on because I mean this is what makes a hydraulic lifter work. It's this little ball that's going to sit right here. Okay, the spring's got a little spot of rust. 
Oh, I think I wiped it off with my fingers. Okay. What about the cap? Cap looks good. Give it a quick wipe anyway. All right. So if you've removed the uh, the little locking ring on the large part of the piston, now's a good time to put it on. I didn't remove it in my video, so when I cleaned mine, uh, so no need to do this step since it's already installed. So now the next step, or the first step if you still have that ring installed, is you take the little spring and you put it in the cap. Oh, it's jumping around. You put it in the cap. If you don't get it to line up correctly, I found that just tapping on it eventually makes it, there you go, you just tap on it and eventually it seats fine. So now you take the little ball and you put it in the cap. There you go. Now you take the small part of the piston, you flip it shallow side down and then you simply press it on top of the cap. All right, that's good. When you hear it click into place, just make sure it clicked on evenly. And if it did, you can continue. So now, you take the large spring and you put it inside the large part of the piston. All right. Again, if you can't get the spring to line up right, just tap it like that. Just take it and tap it a few times until it lines. So now you take the cap end of the small piston and you drop down on, you drop that down onto the big spring. Now this is going to be a tight fit, so make sure you get it on straight. If you get it on straight, it's going to work fine. Now there's going to be some excess air trapped between, uh, well inside the piston. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a thin piece of metal, a toothpick works fine. You're going to press open the ball from this side and you're just gonna squeeze the lifter down. So now the lifter looks like this. You see, it's got a lot of movement. That's good. Now, now's the, now's the tricky part. It's to put in just enough oil, not to have it over inflated, but also to prevent it from bottoming out, uh, to prevent the lifter from bottoming out when the engine is first started. So usually I've got in here some Castrol Edge 0W40, it's fully synthetic oil. So usually you need to put about, oops, that overflowed, just about uh, like maybe a full amount of this top part. So have it more or less up to the edge. All right, so now, once that's up to the edge, take your piece of metal again, open the valve, the ball, and then slowly press down on the lifter. And you'll see the oil level drop, that's good. So now it squeezes a little bit less than it did before, but I'm going to add a tiny little bit more oil, just a bit more. You eventually get a feel for how much you need. Yeah, just a few drops. Squeeze those in and that should be good. All right. See, now it's compressing just a little bit. That's good. Okay, now, besides, if you if you put too much oil, you'll know right away when you go to reassemble the lifter. So you might have to redo that if you screwed up. Well, that's okay. It doesn't take a long time to redo it. So now take your, again, your oil, put just a little bit around here on the inside. You don't want to fill this up, just a little bit on the inside. Wiggle it in. Now, you're gonna take the open part and that's gonna go downwards because this is the part that touches the valve. So you're just gonna line it up 
more or less straight and then you're going to push it down all right let's see if there's too much oil in the lifter now so to test if there's too much oil in the lifter you're going to grab the center part with a rag and you'll see if it turns this should turn freely Right now, mine doesn't turn freely at all. It's jammed, which means I put too much oil into the, into the lifter. So I'm going to have to pull it apart and redo it. Okay, so I redid the previous steps. I disassembled the lifter, removed the piston, took the oil out, redid everything. So now, you know you've done it well when you can grab the center part here and the lifter freely rotates around it. Then you know you've got it right. You should still be able to compress the, the lifter a tiny little bit. Anyway, it's recommended that you let the lifters bleed down for half an hour before installing them. I'm gonna let them bleed down for a long time because by the time I finish my cylinder head and all that, that's gonna take about a week. So they'll have a week to bleed down. Anyway, so that's that's fine. Now you're gonna put it back into your cup so that you don't know, I mean so that you don't forget where it came from. And to protect it from rust, just soak it in WD-40. There you go.